was this a passion years as a kid? Maybe because obviously you played basketball at the highest level. You must have done, you know, given a lot of time to doing that. But was this a passion when you was a kid, or is this something that you know you got later on in life, or was it from the time you were just a little kid? Go, but I love pinball. It, it, uh, it started early. I, I guess I loved it without really knowing. I used to go bowling with uh, a, a group, and there was only three kids in the group and a leader. And so I would I would quickly bowl my turn and then run to the arcade and put money in a pinball machine. And inevitably, my turn would come up before I was done playing. And they'd say, where is he? He's always playing pinball. Every frame he goes and plays. I don't know why he bowls. He should just play pinball. And uh, I'm a Slurpee addict. I love 7-Eleven Slurpees. And every time I get one, I'd, I'd throw some money in the in the pinball machine at 7-Eleven and the roller skating rink. I never, I never got picked for snowballs by the female uh, skaters, so I'd spend my time scrounging up dimes and nickels to play pinball at the roller skating rink. Uh, life in Winnipeg, <laughs> Manitoba, growing up. It's cold the, there. I know, it's going to stay inside. Indoor spots. Well, well, you got to find indoor arcades. What was the what machine was the, the first with the first game? Which uh, pinball game? Uh, Pinbot was a game that got me hooked. It was a game from 1986 by Williams. It, it sort of helped to to bring back pinball for a while. Uh, it's just a classic title. I have a more modern version called um, Jackpot these days. Also, Cyclone is a very uh, I love fun Cyclone. Game. Cyclones, hey, you, with the pace, step right up. You blaze your money, you take your chances. <laughs> <laughs> and which is the one that has, like, the, uh, the ventriloquist dummy's head in the middle where you can that, hit that, that's Funhouse. Funhouse, okay. That's hey, a, I love that ball. Yeah, Funhouse is, is classic. See, you know all the good ones. I've got a, a Funhouse downstairs and a Cyclone, and those are those are pinballs that, that a lot of people remember because they were... Pat, said, Pat Lawler made Funhouse. I say, ride the Cyclone. Right, yeah, exactly. And, then, and, there was, right up. And, and there's another one with, with, that has fans built in. That, that, oh, that's, like, that's Whirlwind. Whirlwind, yeah, that's, with a I've magnet. That that's, that's the one I used to play at 7-Eleven. Yeah, that thing will blow your hairpiece right off. <laughs> that, that game's great. And there's another one, it's, it's it's got like a the the, the backsplash is like a, a police car and it says it's like high speed chase or something and you and you get yeah. it on the ramp in the middle and you sound can, like a game. I know, but it can go it can go around and around More multiple times up the ramp. You're talking about high speed two, the getaway that was developed by my uh, designed by my friend Steve Ritchie who I've had a chance to meet and it's pretty cool to to meet someone that designed these great games. So high speed two, the getaway is classic. I think you need to get these machines, put them in your basement, and you'll uh, you probably won't go to want to go to work anymore. But you'll have you'll have fun. Well, I don't anyway. I don't, I don't really. Yeah, want we're to doing think. this really so, not. Uh... But, but can, do your feet allow you to to play any basketball at all, even recreationally? Uh, not not really. My brother in law's got a hoop up, and I you know I can set shoot. I was never much of a I never didn't have much of a vertical to begin with, but I can just stand. I can't really jump. Uh, partly because of the uh, extra weight I put on, but partly just because of my feet. So I'll, I'll set shoot a little. Bit. Um, and uh, you know, I've, I've spoken to a, to a few kids and stuff, and they're always like, "Oh, they they don't really. Uh, they just want you to dunk at the end of it, and come Kobe Bryant or something." And so back before I used to do the the best dunk I could, which was really not that impressive. And then the last time I talked, I couldn't even dunk anymore. So I thought, okay, it's really time to really time to hang them up. So. And you, now. What else do you do besides, obviously you have an unbelievable passion for pinball. What else are you doing? He's got a little kid. He's, yeah, he's, I know he's yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Being I a dad. I got a 20-month-old baby girl just got up, from her, uh, got up from her nap, so I'm changing diapers. We got number two due in March, so I love being a dad. I've got my daughter playing pinball with me. She, uh, she likes to crawl on top of the pinball machines, and so I'm trying <laughs> to get her, get her hooked on it early so she can come to pinball tournaments with me. And, uh, yeah, so I'm, they're, they're, the kids are keeping me busy. I'm trying to, trying to get back into shape. I'm, I'm swimming that way. It, you know, it takes a lot of the weight off my feet, and I don't really notice the, the nerve pain when I'm swimming. So I'm trying to, trying to, get, back to uh, get back to where I was at. Talking to former NBA center and current professional pinball player Todd McCullough on Sports Radio 6. Were you good uh, with your NBA money? And I know as a, a second-round pick, you don't get that same initial payday, but were you smart with it, or did you, like, blow it all on Lamborghinis and, and whores? <laughs> no, uh, no, no Lamborghinis. I mean, I, I did spend, uh, I've got a nice game room here, but I guess the nice thing is that those games, you know, although they might not be worth what they were before the before the downfall, they still have they still have value. So, you know, like anybody, I probably could have saved a little more, but I'm not, I'm not running out to, uh, to look for work. So as of right now, I can put food on the table for my for my little ones. Uh, I do a little bit of analysis for Fox Sports Northwest, so I'm, I'm sort of looking for enjoyable work. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, I could have been smarter, but uh, and, um, I'm doing okay. Are you good? You know, because I know I used to uh, go out with Dave Corsi, not as a date, but when, when I covered the Bulls. Oh, and, and it was a date. Would... All right, so it was a date. 
Uh, but but he was so good at all these games. I, I mean, I don't I don't know where. I mean, are you good at other things besides the pinball? Because he was so good at these games. It was like I said, you want to be doing this instead of playing basketball. Cause you suck at basketball. Like, like like other video games. <laughs> yeah, video games and stuff. He was so good at all that stuff. Um, I've I've always been a always been a gamer. I, my parents never let me have a Nintendo growing up, and that was the worst thing I could have done. I was like a I just I got a little crazy when I went into college and started buying up all the systems, Nintendos and. And you know Genesis and Xbox and all that stuff. So I've I've gotten less into the console gaming and more into the mechanical feel of a, a pinball machine that mm-hmm. you know you can you can feel it. Anything getting locked into a video game, and I I have nothing against that stuff. But I, I okay, yeah, because I I was a little uh, more physical. Arcade games are better. Ar- arcade games, like if, like a good game of Robotron, when you have yeah. to, just just there's all it is that's is two joysticks. Things to do, yeah, I mean, yeah, that's the kind of stuff he could do. Right. It's so much more yeah. satisfying than just yeah. a, a little yeah. tiny controller with the tips of your thumbs. You're, you're right. There's something like uh, having the original cabinet there, and and uh, the arcade was a very special place. I I like. I'm a big kid. I'm I'm you know, trying as long as I can not to grow up. So I love going to the fair and playing games and trying to win my daughter a bunch of stuffed animals that we don't need. And uh, so I, you know, I like doing all of that stuff. I was going to say, but as we let you go, we really appreciate you jumping on. That's exactly what you still sound like a big kid. That's, I'm trying to hold it off, and fortunately, my wife said as long as uh, as long as you know we're all taken care of, then I can I can refuse to grow up. So I'm I'm trying to uh, <laughs> trying to be a better parent and land less of a buddy, I guess. Uh, who do you... the wonderful people I I didn't get enough time to spend with. All right, Todd, we'll let you get back to changing diapers and playing pinball. And being so, a big kid. So uh, <laughs> thanks for joining us. Good luck at the whatever the next pinball tournament may be. Okay, I, I appreciate it. we got the Vancouver Regional Pinball Association final meet coming up this weekend, so I appreciate the, uh, maybe I can win another 52 Canadians. All right, go get them. <laughs> Thanks, Todd. Todd. Thanks a million. <laughs> Todd McCullough, former NBA setter, current pinballer, our guest on Sports Love Radio. NBA setters. Say, I, you know what? I do. I know you do. I do. I, what's, what's not to like about old There's NBA setters? There's really nothing setters. not to like about him. That's the guy. He's not even that old. He's 33. I know. But they're really, there's just something about him. Something about him. I always love the centers. We should point out here on Chicago Sports Radio 670 the score that our new buddy, our newest, bestest friend, BFF, Todd McCullough. You can say something. And, and you know what? You could put together a lot of game rooms with old pinball machines for how much? $28 million. Yeah, I, I think you can. You know, that 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 that, that whole he thing. He made $28 million. Yeah, I think that whole thing of putting together a little game room with some old pinball machines in it. Probably good buy on you, you That's not really extravagant. You don't need Wade Boggs to come over and bid everything out to the, the contractors, right? Or have him doing the contracting. <laughs> it was the uh, Nets that uh, gave him a deal, right? Yeah, because he, he had a weird-looking sort of career breakdown because he went... He just had sort of one year with the Nets. It was Sixers, and then it looks like the Nets gave him the money, and then he went back to the... He said he's a free agent with the Nets as their starting center in the 2001 offseason, but then he was traded back to the Sixers for 0203. Okay. Well, somewhere along the line, never, no wonder, because, we, you know, you're always wondering if the guy, uh, I, I can see where he's still able to put food on the table. He's got a great right. life. Lives in Seattle. He's got he's, he's got all my favorite pinball games, does, yeah. too. And he can be as big a kid as he wants to be when you got that kind of money in the bank. Right.